Hello, I'm Dr. Manan Gujarati. I'm an orthopedic surgeon with fellowship training in hip and knee surgery in Mumbai, Seoul, and Germany. Today, I'm here to talk to you about osteoporosis, common myths and misconceptions about osteoporosis. So what is osteoporosis and why is it so important? Literally, osteo means bones and porosis means holes, formation of holes. So increased porosity of your bones is called as osteoporosis. Why is it so important today? Because it's a non-communicable, largely preventable disorder. As we see that life expectancy is gone through the roof, 80s is the new 60s. And with increasing age, we find that the increase, there is increase in the number of fragility fractures in people, which can be largely prevented by correction of osteoporosis. Just like correction of diabetes and hypertension has resulted in prevention and delayed heart attacks or less severity of strokes and paralytic disorders. Similarly, proper correction of osteoporosis can reduce the incidence and severity of osteoporotic fractures. So coming to the common myths of osteoporosis. First is that it's a silent killer. Nobody will know you have osteoporosis. No, that is wrong. Osteoporosis has a lot of soft markers, reduced grip strength, frailty, stooped posture, reduced overall health, slow movements and cramps, weak pains, brittle nails, weak teeth. They are all soft markers of osteoporosis and studies have conclusively proven that these soft markers are also associated with increased morbidity and mortality post diseases. So no, osteoporosis is not a silent killer. Secondly, we commonly see patients telling us, Doctor, I have been taking calcium. How can I get osteoporosis? See, calcium is very important, yes. But it is not the be all and end all of osteoporosis. High protein diet is equally important. Bone is a, mineral, is a mineralized matrix of protein. If protein is low, the bones are going to be weak, even though you have been taking calcium regularly. Vitamin D is the transporter. It is the taxi in which the passengers of calcium travel from your food to the bones, to the muscles, to the tissues. So even if you have been taking a calcium supplement, the absorption is only 10 to 15 percent unless your vitamin D levels are normal. In presence of normal vitamin D levels, you will get a higher absorption, 30 to 40 percent absorption of your pills. Not all calcium tablets are the same. We have found that calcium carbonate solubility is much poorer in water and it is dependent on the gastric acid. In other words, if you are on antacids, your calcium pills may not be completely effective. We also need to emphasize the importance of micronutrients. Micronutrients include manganese, magnesium, phosphorus, certain vitamins like vitamin D, vitamin K27, vitamin C, they are all important in maintaining a healthy bone stack. One more common misconception that I commonly hear of is that it's an old woman's disease. No sir, it's not. If you have certain medical diseases such as diabetes, such as cancer, post-covid status, post-tuberculosis, you will find that your bones are weaker than the rest of the people of your age. This is an independent cause of osteoporosis. Similarly, lifestyle choices, sedentary jobs, recreational alcoholism, regular alcoholism, smoking, all these factors can independently make your bones weak and cause osteoporosis. Consumption of certain medications such as anti-epileptics, steroids for rheumatoid arthritis can independently lead to weaker bones than usual. So these are important misconceptions about osteoporosis. Often people tell me, doctor, I drink milk every day. I can't get osteoporosis. Yes, milk is fantastic source of calcium, protein, vitamin D, fat soluble vitamins, lactose and whatnot. But the problem is the cow that is, or the buffalo that has been giving you that milk, the poor animal is been giving milk and lactating for years on end. The poor animal may not have the proper diet. It may not be a free range animal. There may be adulteration in the milk that we drink. These are all you know, conspiracy theories. But the point is that milk alone is not sufficient to make sure that your calcium and protein needs are met. 
and this is a very big question which is why in spite of healthy milk intake osteoporosis is on rise sometimes i get a patient with fracture who tells me doctor how can i get this fracture you are saying it's a fragility fracture but my bmd in that xyz camp that i did was normal see the bmd tests that are done at camps are screening tests they are like taking temperature with your hand they don't really measure you they just gauge sometimes it's possible that you have low bone mineral density in spite of not showing up on screening test for a patient with a fragility fracture no other test need to be run the fracture in the wrist a fra compression fracture in the spine a hip fracture which is a, all these fractures if they are low energy falls are by definition a marker of osteoporosis if your doctor feels that you are osteoporotic because of your symptoms he may run a certain test such as dexa vitamin d levels serum calcium phosphates alkaline phosphatase and these are the true ways to ju to judge and determine if you are really osteoporotic it is crucial to combat osteoporosis in time it can not only prevent fragility fractures but it can improve your quality of life your performance and it can ensure a longer and a healthier quality of life that is all about it today thank you